Okay, so you guys need to see this right now. This is a gimbal that auto unlocks and then locks itself. That's it. That's the review. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button, sub button. See you next time. Bye. Just kidding, but seriously, if you're easily impressed like me, then this right here is probably enough for some of you to just go out and buy the new DJI RS3 gimbal. But if you do want a little bit more detail, stick around. Whew, that never gets old. What's up everyone, it's Aaron from Rudy Visuals and we are of course reviewing what is now without question my new favourite gimbal. So much so that I actually bought this for myself with my own money. I parted £469 to be precise. I have owned countless gimbals over the last few years, most of which have been sent to me besides the Zion Crane 2, but I've never really been 100% completely happy with any of them for you know various reasons, hence why I got this one. This is the RS3, but there is also an RS3 combo kit with the Follow Focus kit, as well as an RS3 Pro for bigger and kind of heavier camera setups. So before we get into this rear view proper, let me just show you a few sample shots all taken with the RS3 paired with my Sony a7S 3 So let us know what you thought of the samples in the comment section below. So I think we really should start by talking about this auto lock and unlock feature because seriously, this is not just like a, a cool marketing gimmick. The second I saw this witchcraft and wizardry in their product trailer, I just knew I had to see this in person for myself. And it is generally a massive time saver and massive quality of life improvement and just makes the whole process of shooting with a gimbal and moving from location to location so much easier and more simple. It isn't just a gimmick, it literally makes your life so much easier. It's a huge, huge, huge thumbs up here from me. The RS3 doesn't auto balance, unfortunately. We're not quite at that level of awesomeness just yet. You still have to balance the camera as you normally would on any gimbal. But once that's done and you have the gimbal powered on, literally just switch it on and off and it will auto lock. Switch it back and it unlocks ready to film. And once it's locked, it feels very, very secure. Unlike on kind of like cheaper gimbals, the locks feel actually feel super solid. And let's see if it passes the angry jig test. Yeah, I think that's a pass. And if you hate the joyful things in life, you can disable auto lock and lock everything manually if that's your prerogative. I also really appreciate this nice quality of life edition, the micro adjustment knob on the mounting plate, which prevents the plate from sliding about during the balancing process and allows you to have a lot more control over the positioning of the plate. Moving on, the actual build quality of this gimbal is top notch. If you've ever used any kind of DJI product or gimbal before, you'll know their build quality tends to be one of their strong points compared to other brands, with only issues really being with like faulty batteries. The handles, the buttons and the body all feel super solid and rugged and I I feel really confident that I can use and abuse this gimbal and it will handle that abuse just fine, which I have done to be honest with you on multiple of my projects. The gimbal itself weighs around 1.3 kilograms, so it's not particularly heavy either and it does fold up really compactly and it's also really easy to pack this up with you on shoot. It's a really nice plus that you can actually essentially take it apart and it will fit into most camera style backpacks just fine. You also get a larger 1.0 inch OLED screen, which has a great touch screen and a very simple user interface and menu system. Not really much to say there, a five-year-old could probably operate this gimbal, it's so easy. So another big thumbs up here. I also like that you have these function buttons to change the gimbal modes quickly without any fuss. It really 
does seem like DJI's mindset was making a gimbal that was just as easy to operate as possible so that you can focus on your shoot and more creative things rather than constantly fiddling with the gimbal, which is something I feel like I've had that issue with gimbals in the past. Overall, the entire design of this gimbal, it makes it really easy to balance, to set up and just to start shooting with. This handle, which contains the battery, can now also be detached. So you could theoretically buy more of these so you have extra juice or if you have issues with the battery, it's easily replaceable without having to send the whole gimbal back in for repair. And the battery itself should last you for around about 12 hours and you can get a full charge in about two and a half hours. As for the payload, the gimbal can support weights up to three kilograms without issues. Three kilograms is enough weight for most full frame mirrorless cameras and the vast majority of lenses. So another big pass there. Now I have had some people complain about this gimbal having issues with zoom lenses, but I found that if you balance the gimbal with the lens somewhere in the middle of the zoom range, it's been absolutely fine for me. I didn't have any problems with my Tamron 28 to 75, for example. Another really big selling point of the RS3 is that you no longer need cables to control your camera and shutter. You can simply just pair it up via Bluetooth and you can control everything wirelessly. Another feature that just makes shooting with this gimbal so much more simpler than in the past. I remember using a Crane 2 a few years ago and I went to shoot under slung and then the cables got tangled up and then broke off and it knackered the port on the camera as well. So not needing to use any cables is another really useful quality of life addition. The Ronin app compared to some other apps I've used in the past is also a lot more polished than some of the brands I've used. The pairing process was seamless. It paired up straight away with no issues and the features on the app are pretty standard. There's nothing really complex here. You can fully control the gimbal program motions. You have access to creating time lapses and panoramas, that sort of thing, which you can do on the gimbal itself as well. I also love this force mobile feature where you can use your phone as a controller. We have seen this in the past on previous gimbals, but it just feels a lot more polished here. And in terms of the performance, well, the DJI RS3 features their third generation stabilization algorithm, which according to them is a 20% improvement over their last generation gimbals. Now this is actually the first DJI gimbal I've actually ever owned. And with my A7S III and various zoom lenses, I found the performance to be absolutely excellent. It remained stable and smooth no matter what kind of shot I was trying to get. Whether I was running full speed, going under slung, doing like slow or fast pans, walking shots, walking in and out, it always kept up. I literally had no issue at all with this gimbal. An issue that I've encountered fairly often with other gimbals is you get those little micro jitters or unwanted movements during pans and tilts, which would mean you'd have to reshoot things multiple times, or it just ruining the shot completely if I miss something important. DJI have clearly been making gimbals for a long time. They know what they're doing, and it really honestly shows in the performance. It feels so much more refined to use than previous gimbals I've used in the past. It kind of just fills you with confidence. I'm honestly struggling to think of anything bad to say about this gimbal, besides maybe for those of you who just need more than three kilograms of payload. The price is also a little bit more expensive than some of its competition and it kind of sucks for the price that you don't get like a carry case but it fits so nicely in most bags anyway and it can be taken apart into small pieces so it's not really a deal breaker so besides that I'm honestly struggling to think of anything to criticize this gimbal about I filled with it for about eight hours of a day and it did hurt my back a little bit but that's it it hurt my back most things hurt my back because I'm an old man so there you go. So I think that leads me nicely to my conclusion, which is that sometimes it does make sense to go for the established brand, even if it means paying a little bit more compared to the competition. So for £469, you could get any number of gimbals, honestly, You'd probably get two for that amount of money. But the RS3 is a super solid performing. It's well built. It's so simple. It's just such an easy gimbal to recommend. I think that's the thing about this gimbal. It's so easy to recommend. I've reviewed so many gimbals in the past and they've always had one or two things that made me sort of feel a bit uncomfortable, like fully recommending it. I've always felt gimbals kind of restrained me somehow. I felt limited by them. I dreaded setting them up and I always felt like I was constantly fighting the gimbal throughout my shoot. The DJI RS3 is the first gimbal I've used pretty much ever that's kind of removed that feeling. It's just seamless and it makes the RS3 the best gimbal I've used. That's it. That's all you need to know. Go buy it. They're not even sponsoring me. I'm telling you to buy it my own words. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you do want to get one of these for yourself, which I highly recommend you do, then uh, look in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, like, the, like the video, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm just going to be here for a while doing this. So yeah, cool. Bye.